Denzel always told me we'd be at the parties. He said, you leave, leave 30 minutes for the devil get there. Whatever your practice, meditation, prayer, hope, dream, but you got to fill that bucket. You got to understand that it is being emptied every day. There's a saying, when the devil ignores you, then you know you're doing something wrong. If there is someone who has always cared for young black actors in Hollywood, then it has to be Denzel Washington. At your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. These wise words were spoken by the icon to fellow actor Will Smith after Smith's brain snap at the 2022 Academy Awards. When the devil comes at you, maybe it's because you're trying to do something right. These words are even more helpful now, given the series of unfortunate events Bad Boy founder and rapper Sean Diddy Combs has been going through. According to Denzel, the invincible Hollywood gatekeepers may as well decide to use Diddy's case to weed out all the potential black actors who don't conform to the written rules, whether they are wrong or right. In the past, the said gatekeepers have tried to ruin the careers of Denzel himself, the likes of Samuel L. Jackson, and even the industry veteran Morgan Freeman. Social feeds now echo Denzel's words, along with replays of Will Smith's comedian Chris Rock for insensitive comments made about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Whether or not Denzel's words played a role in Smith's remorse is, of course, open to speculation, but the veteran's advice certainly seemed to stick. When later that night, 53-year-old Smith received his first-ever Oscar for Best Actor for his role in King Richard, he publicly acknowledged Denzel's words to him in his acceptance speech, saying, Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, he said, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. Denzel's warnings about the dangers of fame come from personal experience. Although raised in a Christian home with his church pastor father, Denzel says he spent 40 years of his life in Hollywood, struggling for my own soul. The Bible says in the last days we'll become lovers of ourselves. The number one photograph now is a selfie, so we all want to lead. We're willing to do anything, ladies and young men, to be influential, he said. Fame is a monster and we all have these ladders and battles, roads we have to walk in our given lives. Be you famous or whoever's out there listening, we all have our individual challenges. It's cliche, but money doesn't make it better. It doesn't. Fame just magnifies the problems and the opportunities, he continued. I'm going to make a conscious effort to get up and speak about what God has done for me, the Oscar winner said. Denzel is now committed to being a Christian mentor to others and openly warns young actors against the dangers of overindulging in Hollywood. Diddy's latest scandal has attracted many names, especially those of black celebrities, and Denzel is worried that everyone named may be facing the end of their careers. In March this year, music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones published a bombshell lawsuit accusing the Grammy-winning rapper and his associates of S. Ewell assault. The producer, who worked for Diddy between September 2022 and November 2023, named several notable people in his lawsuit, including fellow musicians, British royalty, and members of Diddy's staff. In response, Diddy's lawyer has claimed Jones's lawsuit engages reckless name-dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not occur. The lawsuit re-emerged in headlines recently after federal agents raided Diddy's homes in Los Angeles, California and Miami, Florida. A statement from Homeland Security said law enforcement actions had been executed as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. Meanwhile, Diddy's lawyer Aaron Dyers called the raids a gross overuse of military-level force. While Diddy is also facing several other lawsuits, Jones's filing is the most recent and most expansive legal attack on the rapper yet. As mentioned earlier, among those dragged into the suit include Prince Harry. The producer's lawsuit does not allege that Prince Harry was involved in any wrongdoing. However, he does claim that those who affiliated with or sponsored Diddy's alleged S-traying parties became connected with celebrities such as international dignitaries like the British royal Prince Harry. Instagram model Daphne Joy and rapper Young Miami are also named as alleged S-workers. Jones says Diddy paid a monthly fee and forced him to solicit. In an Instagram statement, Joy called Jones' claims 100% false and accused him of character assassination. Meanwhile, Young Miami seemed to deny the claims as well, responding to a post on X implying she would do anything for 250 k And the name-dropping doesn't stop there. Jones named both Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Grange and Ethiopia Habtamarium, 
former CEO of Motown Records, owned by UMG in his lawsuit. Grange and Habdemarium, along with their music labels and others, are 100% liable for the actions of Sean Combs, Jones claimed in his lawsuit. The producer said Diddy would threaten him with isolation from the music industry, using his connections with these CEOs as leverage. The lawsuit states Diddy and his associates used threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, parading powerful music industry executives such as defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium at his parties filled with S-workers, minors and illegal drugs such as ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana and mushrooms. Following those wild allegations, Habtamarium said she would be willing to testify about the contract Jones signed to produce Diddy's The Love Album. Meanwhile, Grange's lawyers have filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit. A license to practice law is a privilege, Donald Zacharin, the attorney who represents UMG and Grange, wrote per Billboard. Mr. Blackburn, plaintiff's lawyer, has misused that license to self-promote gratuitously, falsely, and recklessly accusing the UMG defendants of criminal behavior. Just hours after federal agents raided Diddy's homes, Jones filed an amendment to his case accusing actor Cuba Gooding, known for his films Boys and the Hood and Jerry Maguire, of S. Ewell assault. The music producer said Gooding S. Ewellly harassed and assaulted him after being G'd and then passed off by Diddy to the actor. Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Jones' legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his B and his shoulders, the amendment to the lawsuit stated. If by any chance there is truth to that, then Diddy will need those Denzel Washington's prayers. Christina Corum, Diddy's chief of staff, is also named throughout Jones' lawsuit. Among other things, the music producer accused Corum of requiring all of Diddy's employees to carry drugs around his home, including cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, and marijuana. He also claimed Corum ordered S workers and for her boss. Jones also said the chief of staff is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs' Jeffrey Epstein, referring to the former British socialite currently being held in prison for 20 years after being convicted of child s trawing and other related charges. About five months ago, Diddy's life dramatically changed. Singer Cassie, the music mogul's former partner and a recording artist, sued him for s Ewell assault and said he repeatedly are and physically abused her for nearly a decade. They reached a settlement two days later, but subsequent lawsuits from more women followed with claims of R and S. Ewell assault. Christian Combs, the entertainer's 26-year-old son, has been accused of S. assault in a lawsuit filed recently that also listed 54-year-old Diddy as a defendant, multiple outlets reported. What's interesting about Diddy is, different from other moments that we've seen around Russell Simmons or R. Kelly, the zeitgeist has changed and people are ready to believe the survivors who are coming forward. Me Too founder Tarana Burke told The Hollywood Reporter. I think there's some unpacking to do there around the why. I want to believe a lot of it is because the ground has been set, because of what we've seen. For years and years and years, people did not believe those of us who were saying R. Kelly was dangerous. Even after the hash Me Too movement burst onto the scene, it still took a monumental effort, Burke said, referring to the hash Muter Kelly campaign and the Emmy-nominated docuseries Surviving R. Kelly. That's the difference. In our community, communities of color, particularly black communities, we haven't had the luxury of being able to come forward. So this Diddy moment is indicative of a lot of change that started from the hashtag going viral to now. Diddy's alleged dark, freak-off parties hit the headlines after the star's properties were raided, prompting the industry to remember the advice Denzel Washington had given earlier. Following the scenes, a number of celebrities came out to comment on Diddy, including 50 Cent, who mocked the rapper. Creepy old clips of Diddy also resurfaced, including scenes of the rapper with a young Justin Bieber. As soon as you turn 16, now 50 Cent, who has a long-running feud with Diddy, has said he hopes to obtain the compromising footage from Diddy's alleged parties. According to Lil Rod's lawsuit, Diddy stashed a number of hidden cameras in his properties in Los Angeles and on Star Island. The filing read, while living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his home. The filing continued. Combs has recordings of several celebrities, artists, music label executives, and athletes engaging in illegal activity. These individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent. 
It also added, Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person who has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. The lawsuit alleges that Diddy regularly hosted S-traying parties, which included the use of illegal drugs. It has been reported separately that the singer's alleged mule was arrested on drug charges at Miami Airport, while the rapper's LA and Miami mansions were raided by the police. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, 25-year-old Brendan Paul was arrested and charged with two separate charges, one count for possession of suspected cocaine and another for suspected marijuana possession. In the paperwork, officers allege they came across suspected contraband in Paul's travel bags, and after the suspected narcotics were tested, they were found to be illegal substances. This led to Paul's arrest. The suspect was held in custody but later bailed. There has so far been no evidence that connects the drugs reportedly found in Paul's possession with Diddy. Paul is set to appear in court on April 24. Jones also claimed Diddy would make attendees of his parties sign non-disclosure agreements. In separate proceedings in December last year, Cassie Ventura claimed she was subjected to torrents of abuse from her former long-term partner. The singer alleged she had been coerced by Diddy to engage in a fantasy of his called voyeurism. She claimed she was directed to have S with several male while Diddy watched, masked Ted, took pictures, and shot video. He called them freak-offs. Cassie's close friend Tiffany Red echoed her friend's claims in a letter published in Rolling Stone. She claimed she saw Diddy force Cassie to leave her own birthday party in August 2015 in order to have S with a male in the scathing letter, Red said the bad boy founder called the move a freak off. Red wrote, I was terrified for Cassie and completely traumatized. Your abuse of power has inflicted ongoing harm on countless individuals, including myself, my friends, and my peers. It has to stop. Following the letter, Diddy's representative denied the wrongdoing in a statement. Shortly after Cassie's case was settled outside of court, Ben Braffman, Diddy's lawyer, said in a statement shared with The Mirror, Just so we're clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. He added, Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Miss Ventura the best. So, for those whose names are still untainted, it's about time to follow Denzel's advice and stay out of trouble. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.